This is the third talk in the SCJ, ACJ and Clavicle Sports Med series and in this talk we're going to focus on the clavicle which as we saw in the introduction is really a strut. So the clavicle is an S-shaped flat bone and is in fact the only horizontal long bone in the body. Traditionally it's divided into lateral, middle and medial thirds However, in practice, it's much better to divide the clavicle into fifths. So there's the lateral fifth, the medial fifth, and the middle three fifths. And the reason for this is that the AC joint and its coracoclavicular ligaments and the SC joint with its ligaments mean that fractures in this area are relatively uncommon and are different and are treated differently. So we're predominantly going to tr con concentrate on middle third fractures. So the mechanism of injury, this tends to be a, a direct uh, injury or either a, a fall generally from a height. The clinical presentation, the patients often have pain and swelling and point tenderness over the site of the fracture. The arm is generally held adapted and supported and there tends to be varying levels of displacement. The more displacement there is, often particularly with shortening, the more issues they have with uh, scapulothoracic dysfunction. So as we saw in the last talk with regards to protraction of the scapula, this can occur with the more uh, displaced clavicle fractures. And it's important to assess uh, skin tenting and integrity. Very rarely uh, there can be issues with skin integrity, particularly if there's a, a very sharp point to the fracture. With regards to imaging, the vast majority of clavicle fractures can be managed just with x-rays and it's important to appreciate the difference between an AP view and a 20 to 30 degree Kefalad view. The Kefalad view gives a much better appreciation of the sigmoid curve to, to the clavicle and it gives a much truer representation of the displacement. So these are exactly the same fractures and you can see the Kefalad view gives us shows that the fracture is more displaced and gives a, a better idea, particularly with regards to potential posterior displacement. CT scans uh, are used rarely. This is a reformatted scan to look at the fracture fragment placements. It's rare that we require this. We tend to normally use a CT scan to look for evidence of uh, delayed or non-union. It's sometimes very difficult in fractures that are a, a, a little bit older uh, on a plain x-ray to see whether they've uh, truly united. So a CT scan can be very useful there. So fracture classification is important. This really helps us to uh, know how we're going to treat fractures. So the important thing is to look at the position of the fracture. So whether it's in the middle uh, or lateral or medial parts of, of, of the bone. Comminution is important, so you can have a, a spiral fracture, an oblique fracture, a transverse fracture, and a comminuted fracture. And actually, these fractures occur with uh, increasing uh, amounts or, 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 of energy. Um, so a comminuted fracture, not only is the, the bone broken into, into smaller parts, it's required more energy to do this, this often uh, can have an effect on the surrounding soft tissues the likelihood of this to heal and perhaps the requirement uh, for surgery. So for mid-shaft clavicle fractures, there are a number of classification systems. This is the Robinson classification system. And the important thing is uh, as the number gets higher, the comminution uh, gets higher. And really something that uh, is a telltale sign of a fracture probably going to get that's going to go on to non-union is if you have a vertical uh, segmental comminuted fragment. So in this fracture, that vertical fragment means there's a high chance that if you don't fix this, uh, this fracture just will not unite. So ultimately you're going to have to do something down the line if you don't fix it straight away. Lateral clavicle fractures, uh, the importance for lateral clavicle fractures are really the type 2 A and B and the type 5. These fractures uh, have occurred just medial to the coracoclavicular ligaments or they've involved, involved just the co conoid ligaments. So they're akin in a way to an AC joint dislocation so that the medial part of the clavicle will have an unopposed pull of trapezius so that always tends to get displaced. So type 2 and type 5 lateral clavicle fractures uh, tend to have issues and go on to a non-union and require, and require surgery. 
Displacement, as a general rule, uh, on plain x-rays we really look at shortening and uh, shortening greater than 20 millimeters uh, may lead to functional deficit. Um, there's not a lot of agreement of it as to exactly how we measure that shortening, so a number of different methods um, have been have been described. Uh, some people like to look at both sides and uh, to compare both sides. However, it's very difficult to truly make sure you've got an AP of both clavicles. So a more surefire way is to actually use a CT scan. However, shortening isn't the only component and this is something that is not generally appreciated on a plain x-ray and it's to do with functional deficit and I've just got a little example here so if we look at this uh, clavicle here if we have a fracture in, in, in this spot you can have an element of shortening but actually there's no imaging that really shows you how uh, displaced or protracted uh, the uh, fracture is so this is exactly the same fracture configuration but actually, uh, just the way it lies, it can cause greater issues with uh, scapular thoracic function. And uh, a lot of my decisions with regards to fixing clavicle fractures aren't just on the x-ray. It's very important to examine the patient to see exactly what's happening with uh, their scapula. This is a very uh, useful prognostic indicator that was uh, written up again by Mike Robinson. And it's a system by which you can put in a number of factors to see the likelihood of a fracture going on to a non-union. So uh, factors that will increase the chance of a non-union are the amount of communion, uh, whether the patient smokes or whether the the age of the patient, and actually uh, females are more likely to have non-unions than males. So for millimetre displaced uh, fractures, uh, non-optive treatment really involves a uh, sling uh, for comfort and I really recommend that for two weeks or uh, as they begin to mobilise uh, uh, with comfort. So they can start to mobilise at about three to four weeks. Um, patients uh, come from the continent where they like to use this type of figure of eight brace really. There's no evidence for that. I don't think it really makes a big difference. In fact, it is generally um, quite uncomfortable. And I don't think it actually reduces the clavicle or AIDS recovery. So most patients will see back at four weeks just to make sure that the fracture position um, hasn't uh, displaced. Most patients after about a month are fine for day-to-day uh, -day activities. And it probably takes about three months before they can return to contact sports. So the indications for clavicle fixation, the absolute indications are an open fracture or neurovascular injury, which I mentioned are relatively uh, uh, unusual. So all other ind indications are relative. So those are to do with functional recovery. So that's to do with having a functional deficit. So that's the position of the fracture or, or, or whether they've got issues with, with scapular thoracic function. Or when you look at the prognostic indicated there's a very high high chance that they're going to go on to a non-union. Another indication, particularly with regards to sports, is speed of recovery. If you fix someone's clavicle up, literally within a week or two, they will uh, be able to return, not necessarily to contact sports, to most other sports. I work near Newmarket and uh, the jockeys will come in and uh, fi I'll fix them up and they will be uh, back riding within a week or two. And a third and less common reason is cosmesis. So for uh, this is an example of a patient who's got a comminuted fracture. So they've got uh, this vertical fragment. So they had issues actually with regards to their scapulothoracic function uh, and also, if you put them into the prognostic indicator, there's a very high chance this will go on to a non-union. So this is after they've been fixed up and really almost straight away, they're feeling a lot better. And actually, a lot of the patients are a bit like the chap we saw in the second talk who had a posterior dislocation of his sternoclavicular joint. Often, a lot of these patients are complaining of scapular problems and pain as well as their, their clavicle. This is an example of a patient who's got shortening with scapular protraction. So there's 24 millimetres on this x-ray and this is it uh, reduced. And this is an example of moderate displacement. So this actually was a, a jockey. Um, so we fixed this up and they were back riding within a couple of weeks.
The management of lateral end or lateral fifth clavicle fractures tends to be uh, uh, slightly different. The vast majority of fractures that are within or lateral to the coracoclavicular ligament tend to be minimally displaced and can generally be treated non optionally However, as we mentioned earlier when we were looking at the classification, the type 2 and the type 5 fractures where the fracture site is just medial to the coracoclavicular ligaments or through the coracoclavicular ligaments means that the medial part of the clavicle is likely to be uh, significantly displaced by trapezius. In this instance, uh, we would normally consider fixing these fractures. So we have to use a special plate that is widened at the uh, lateral end so we can get sufficient smaller screws in. And as you can see where the arrow points, there's also uh, a, a little anchor that's gone into the coracoid that's helped to uh, reconstruct the forces of the coracoclavicular ligaments. The management of clavicle fractures in paediatric patients is very different indeed. The ability to heal and the fact that uh, children are growing mean that we can accept almost any uh, level of uh, displacement and in fact it's incredibly rare that uh, surgery would ever be considered for any paediatric fracture. So this is a 13 year old boy who has uh, got this fracture. This is him back at the clinic at five weeks. Clinically, he says he's pain-free, he's got a, a full return to function, but he's obviously got a, a bit of a, a lump present. This is him at three months, and you can see that uh, the callus is uh, really formed and solidified. And at 10 months, you can already see that uh, an element of growth has occurred, so the uh, fracture is disappearing. So he will have no issues with regards to functional deficit. If you'd like to see more videos and talks about this or any other aspects of shoulder surgery, visit my YouTube channel Cambridge Shoulder or my website cambridgeshoulder.co.uk.